Hello, sweet friends. Welcome back to Truth Talks with Tara. Today, we, you guys are in for a treat. I'm so excited that you are listening or watching today with us. We have a new friend, someone that I feel like has been a friend through music that I've listened to <laughs> um, for a long time here with us on the podcast. So it is such an honor. I don't want to make this intro too long. Um, so let's just get into it. Um, we have Christy Knuckles here today, and I am honored. Friend, thank you for being here and giving your time. For those who may not know who you are and what you do, would you just give us a little brief introduction um, about you? Yes. Well, okay. So I'm Christy. I'm kind of a country girl. I was raised in Oklahoma. Um, I'm a preacher's kid. Love um, it. And I've loved um, setting truth to melody since I was a little girl. So I grew up singing, songwriting, leading worship. Um, even in high school, I was leading worship. And then I met my husband when I was 19 um, and oh. we started writing together and we've spent, you know, it's been, we'll celebrate 28 years this summer of marriage and, oh, wow. um, and have been in ministry together that whole time. So mm. we've, um, for a long time, we were called Watermark. We had, you know, several records under that name. And then we were with Passion Conferences for 20 years, um, leading worship, and my husband was producing for them. And then now we um, have our own label. It's called Keepers Branch Records, and we're continuing to put out music. Our favorite adventure is definitely our three kids. Uh, mm -hmm. We have Noah. He's almost 23. Eliana is 20 and then Annie Rose is 15 and they are just our favorite people. Mm -hmm. And I will say to a lot of you that have littles, um, we've actually loved the teenage and young adult years. Oh. We always kind of heard like, Oh, wait till the teenagers, it's going to be <laughs> yeah. awful or whatever, but it's actually yeah. been our favorite. So you have a lot oh. to look forward to those of you who have littles. Um, but yeah, we're still putting out um, music to this day. And then um, I have a podcast, the glorious and the mundane. And yeah, so that's a little bit about me. I love it. No, everything um, is so sweet to hear. And I love that you had that encouragement. I have a almost 15 month old and I am realizing that every season just gets better. And yeah. I actually enjoy the newborn phase. I know some people don't, but I just, I do remember in the middle of that thinking like, when is it ever going to get different? When is this going to get yeah. easier? And now I can say, even though I'm so new <laughs> to being a mom, um, I can say with confidence that it just gets better and it, it gets sweeter and it changes. Um, and so I love that encouragement. And like, you get to be friends too with your kids at this yes. point too. Like obviously still their parents, but I remember yeah. that's kind of the point where I just really became um, friends with my parents. And now, you know, out of the house and married, they're like my best friends. Yeah, and it's, it's just the sweetest. I love that. Yes. I am so thankful that you shared that. Um, I do want to ask too, I love this question. And I'm so curious what you're going to say. Um, I do usually ask my guests a favorite thing that they're loving at the moment. Um, kind of like a favorite things roundup um, yeah. could be so random. Um, so I'm really curious, is there something that you're loving and you want to share with us? <laughs> I definitely have something so random for you. Let's do it. Um, <laughs> I even brought a visual aid. Um, Yay, so. if you're watching on YouTube, <laughs> you get an extra treat. <laughs> right, right, right. So it's called Aqua Notes. Ooh. And okay. this is actually a notebook that what? you can put on your shower wall. And it is actually like, it doesn't bleed and it comes with a little pencil and I cannot what? tell you like their whole tagline is no more great ideas down the drain. That's because amazing. <laughs> Stop. Wait, this is so cool. Where did you find this? And so, you know, Amazon and I, I promise that I'm not like an affiliate. This is just, it's true. Like I buy, when wow. I run out, I buy them. They actually have like a little love notes version where it comes with like a red pencil and it's like, Aww. leave love notes for your loved ones in the shower. Um, but this, Wait. I cannot tell you how many times I have finished song lyrics because you, yeah. as you know, it's like, well, at least for me and mm -hmm. as a mom, you know, he's like, you get in the shower shower and it's just like your one time to kind of like right. that's your time you know yeah <laughs> and it feels like the lord just like sometimes will just fall on the <laughs> in that time yeah. and like give me like some kind of closure to something it's divine or, or just <laughs> even yeah like praying for someone or like jotting down a lyric and yeah there have been times I've I've literally written I've probably I promise you there's like three songs on the new album that I I wrote in the shower and if that's it weren't for Aquanotes. So amazing. That's <laughs> Wait, so is the, is the paper waterproof? Like it, it doesn't disintegrate or anything? It is. It's like the weirdest texture and what then you can tear world? it off and take it with you. But the pencil it comes with it, like it doesn't, 
bleed or run it just like and then the water it's waterproof so it, it like literally just wait you're like okay i gotta take this with That's me so you tear it cool. off and take That's it so yeah. cool okay i need to get this and i think my husband would be happy because i am a little bit notorious we have a little like caddy against the wall and like even though it doesn't get water on it it's still not great to have my phone in there but i used to put my phone there with yeah. spotify or like a youtube um mm-hmm. video when i was like doing my hair wash routine you know the whole <laughs> nine yards i wanted something to entertain me and my husband would come in and he would get so mad at me He'd be like, Tara, you're getting moisture in it, even if it's not in the water. He's like, you can't do that anymore. Um, And so even just like grabbing my phone to like take, like jot down a note, even in my notes app. He's like, don't touch it. So he would I know, I know. (laughs) Wait, Aqua Notes. Okay. Aqua Notes. Yes. I'm going to link it because I want to get this right after the show. (laughs) (laughs) That's fabulous. Literally probably one of my favorite favorites that's been shared lately. Um, oh, good. I'm so glad. It's such a fun way to start the episode. I love hearing that and knowing that like some of your songs have come from it. That's incredible. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to talk about all things, your new album mm-hmm. and um, just perseverance when you're, when you want to give up and all the encouragement from the gospel today. Mm-hmm. Um, this is The Hour is your new album that came out and um, it is saved on my Spotify. I listen to it probably every day. I'm not even going to lie. And I got to tell you, Christy, Mm -hmm. I have been so formed by Be Held, um, by Advent Hymn, one of my favorite Christmas songs. Um, I just got to tell you how encouraging and how in a lot of ways I've grown up um, with your words and and the words that you and Nathan have produced together. Um, So I'm so, so thankful. And this out, this new album is just another one of those that I know I'm going to grow up with. My son gets to grow up with it too while we're driving in the car. So I'm so, I'm so thankful to talk about it today. But I wanted to um, just for you to share to our listeners to the inspiration behind this album and how it came to be, because we know as people that sing words, write words, that it doesn't just come from something that happened yesterday. It's usually something really like that God's been doing for a long time. So would you share with us? Absolutely. Yeah, I've been saying, you know, this this record, um, be- kind of between the Lullaby album that you're talking about, and this mm-hmm. was four years, yeah. but really, so it was four years in the making, but really kind of a lifetime in a way, like you're saying, just yeah. because um, there's things that, you know, I find that the Lord will connect mm-hmm. um, in writing that, you know, from years back, and he'll bring it back to my remembrance as I'm writing. But overall, this record, you know, even the title, This is the Hour, it really points to this um, idea that we're really, we're living in an hour where God is calling people home to his heart right now in a myriad of ways. And I'm Mm -hmm. seeing it where, wherever I go, and you probably are too, but whether that's people coming to know God for the very first time or prodigals returning home or believers just returning to God as their first love. um, I believe that, you know, we're living in this time of really revival of God revealing his true yeah. heart to people, which feels like such a dichotomy after we've seen a massive amount of people leaving the faith. Right. Um, you know, so it's like we've seen mm-hmm. both, even just we're still in that and it's real recent. But I believe that there's a calling home that he's doing as well. And this album really for me was a personal renaissance or revival in a lot of ways. Even me returning to God's heart fully in a lot of ways and God using the writing of this album to really rescue and encourage me really deeply in some Mm -hmm. ways that um, needed to happen. And the Lord, you know, will often have me live what I'm about to share. Like I have to receive it first. I have to live it first. And I had to receive this encouragement of this album, you know, in those moments of, of writing and even before the songs came, um, and there's a big word in in the book of Romans called exhortation, and mm-hmm. uh, we see that. But really, that just means encouragement. And yeah. I really feel like to my core that this album is a part of, um, you know, it's sort of my part as an artist of God using artists in this age and in this day and in this hour, sort of that renaissance of coming back to truth, coming back to his heart, kind of stripping things back like we don't. Yeah. We don't want the fame. We want, you know, we just want Jesus to be lifted up. We want people Mm. to know his true heart. And, you know, part of exhortation is also encouragement um, Mm -hmm. and also a leaning in and a counsel even. So there's, there's like truth that we need to perk up our ears to. There's this leaning in and sort of this 
bidding that comes with encouragement to where the Lord is, I think, strengthening his people right now, mm-hmm. fortifying his people. Yeah. And I think a lot of that is come home to my heart so that you can be a part of urging others to come home to his heart as well. And so I think if I could describe this record as anything, it would be that an mm-hmm. offering for that kind of work that to come alongside what the Lord is doing, what I see, what it feels like he's doing in this hour. So beautiful. I think that's, that's the perfect explanation. What I, what I see in the songs. And, um, I'm also thinking what, what I've thought too, when I, when I even just saw the title release of the album, I was thinking that, you know, I have noticed this in my own life of feeling so hurried and so distracted by not only social media, but by work and ministry. And even the good things can be a distraction. And I've noticed that at times I haven't lived with the realization and the belief that we don't have a lot of time left, that time matters and that the kingdom is weighty and it's coming. And so when I hear this is the hour, I also am encouraged through the songs that like this stuff matters, that nothing else matters and to pull our focus back um, to Christ mm-hmm. and his glory and what he's doing because man, I am so distracted and I let the enemy tell me so many times that today doesn't matter that oh you can just scroll and be mindless and, and be lazy because you have another tomorrow and you and right. but that's not promised and so when I hear this is the hour when I hear these songs when I hear Christ in me and valor and Psalm 2 and just all of these ones that are so dear to my heart I think man I just, it just stirs my affections again and so I just I'm want so to encourage glad. you in that um this may be a really hard question to ask too but I'm curious is there a song today, this week, or in this season um, of the album that resonates really deeply with you more than the others? I know they all do because they came out of this place, but is there one that is striking you, convicting you? Um, I would just love to hear because I love um, knowing and connecting the, or not the author, the the artist to their songs because yeah. it's part of you. <laughs> mm-hmm. Absolutely. Well, it's interesting. There's if there's one song on the album that I feel like is one that is really deeply like just sort of that word of testimony kind of, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. like Revelation 12 says that, you know, the enemy will be defeated by the blood of the lamb and the word mm-hmm. of our testimony. Yes. And that song is where would I be for me mm-hmm. right now? Um, and it, it really, it's, you find that in this culture, you know, to talk about the blood of Jesus, even um, it's, it's divisive. It's, um, yeah. it is, can be very offensive. And, but it's that thing that um, is, is sort of that line in the sand, you know, of, of really believing that it's really through the sacrifice and um, the cross, the finished work of Jesus, mm-hmm. that we are able to be completely at peace and to know that we're right with the father. And, and so the, the, the chorus just says, where would I be without the blood? Where would I be without your love? You took my place on Calvary without the blood, where would I be? And again, I think, um, you know, we're living in a time and culture where, um, it feels like the sacrifice of Jesus oftentimes is try it's, it's people try to explain it away, um, mm-hmm. in a way that, um, is feels dismissed. Like that's not really what that accomplished. Wow, but for yeah. me, I know that's bold, you know, and I felt like there was, um, if any, someone asked me about this record recently and just said like, what's a phrase you could say around it? And I said, it's beautiful, but I feel like it's bold. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Beautifully bold, um, to come around, um, truths like that. And to be able to say like, Jesus, I remember your sacrifice. Like I will say that it's the defining moment of my life. You know, when I was seven and I, I asked Jesus to be my Lord, you know, it's one thing to believe in him, but for him to be your Lord and for you to believe that it was his sacrifice that gave you Mm. life, you know? And so that song, I just sang it on Sunday for, you know, where I was in Dallas leading and I got choked up just as I was Mm. telling the audience about it. And so that one's just very, I think just that personal testimony to say, like, if ever I'm asked for the reason for the hope I have, like, this is what I'm going to say is like, where would I be without Mm. his sacrifice? So yeah, it would be that song. I love that one. Um, I, 
I remember going through a season a couple years ago. Actually, it was more than a couple years ago. It was when I was just really coming out of a lot of bitterness and anger towards God because of things like, you know, being diagnosed with a chronic illness and, you know, plans not going the way I thought, all these things. And I would go to church and we would do communion like what went once or twice a month. And I remember going through a season of kind of just numbness um, to the whole ceremony of it and thinking, wow, like, okay, this is just ritual. You know, we we do this once a month. I've done this since I was born, um, raised in the church. And and then I was convicted of how, like you said, this is the cornerstone and the foundation of our faith, the blood of Jesus, the washing and cleansing of him. Where would I be? And I had just become so like, well, this is just normative when yeah. I was just so reminded, where would I be without the blood of Jesus? Yeah, um, yeah. And I think it releases a lot of us from the pressure to feel pride or self-sufficiency, which is something that I see not only in myself, but so much in our culture where we're told to hustle, we're told to create our own kingdoms. And where would I be is a humble reminder to all of us and conviction to be like, where would you be? We we, we, we're going to be somewhere. We're not going to be where we really long for. I love, love that. Thank you for sharing that. Um, on your podcast too, you talk a lot about how you, you were so close to giving up. You were so close after you said 28 years of, of ministry of singing, probably singing your whole life. You were really, really close. I remember when you announced this on social media, you're like, yeah, I was actually thinking about never coming back to this. Um, and so I would just ask, you know, to the person listening to this, who's perhaps discouraged by their dreams, weary of doing good. I think that's something that we as believers need to be encouraged in right now is the weariness yeah. of, um, it's, it's hard to do good in this, in this really oppressive world, it mm-hmm. seems, um, and perhaps disenchanted by their purpose. How would you encourage them coming out of a season that you felt the same? Yeah. Um, goodness. Yeah. It was just, a, I realized looking back now that it was really like a, a, a season of grief. I was really mm-hmm. grieving, um, the culture, like, like we've been saying. And, and, you know, a lot of times it felt like, um, I had this microscopic megaphone in order to get out, mm-hmm. you know, the word about whatever it is like the Lord had put in me. And I know a lot of you might feel that way, like with your art or your, the content or just whatever it is, your dreams and what God is, um, you know, sort of the thing that keeps you awake at night. I kind of, I call it our cause sort of that, Mm. that thing that he put in us, um, that only we are meant to, to walk out and steward. And, um, but sometimes I know within the culture we're in, we can feel like we just are like, kind of like this tiny little megaphone to like try to get the word out. And we feel like we're just like up against these algorithms and this huge Mm. thing that just, you're just like, oh my goodness, like what is even the point anymore? And also I recognize the fact in that season that it felt like the more good I was doing, the greater the cost became for me oh, and my family, yes. like spiritually, emotionally, mentally, like all of that. And it was just like, there was a temptation there. And I think all of us feel, have probably felt, and even now feel this, especially coming off of 20 and, you know, the pandemic and all those things, we have this temptation in front of us to like, kind of like, you know, go quiet, like numb out and just kind of yeah. be like, whatever, I'm not making a difference anyway. Like, what's the point? So I'd really reached that moment and I'll never forget. I had, it was just a year ago, really. And a moment on the porch with the Lord where he, you know, I kind of talked about earlier, just that homecoming to his heart. And I had been in the Bible that season. I'd been reading the word of God. I'd been praying, but I realized in that moment when I opened my mouth and just really started crying out to him, like talking to him in a way. It was like the Psalms. I mean, we're given that kind of permission. You know, we have 150 Psalms in the middle of this, of the Bible that literally give us this language to be honest. And I think, um, honesty is something, and even like doubt and all of those things is a part of our faith. It's, it's okay to have those, that discouragement and that doubt, Um, it's not okay to stay there. I've been, and what I think is so beautiful is that we are invited to bring all of that to the Lord and just literally Mm -hmm. out loud. I've learned that it's so important to talk to him out loud and to truly like just voice to him what I'm feeling, voice to him, that discouragement. And it was a really, it was truly this homecoming that night. And I realized when I started talking to him, I was like, oh, I've been praying, but I haven't been praying like from a place of surrender Mm -hmm. and 
there's been a lot of times in my adult life where the Lord has brought me and he's allowed me to hit a wall even of exhaustion and discouragement. That's often an invitation. So if you're feeling Mm -hmm. that way, see it as an invitation from the Lord that he might want you to trust him with something in a way that you never have Mm -hmm. and to surrender. And that kind of that consecration, that's another big word. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. But like, really, that's just, God, I just offer all of me to you. It's like I lay down everything and I pray that you'll lead me and guide me. And he brought me to, um, I'll end with this, with this, this part, but just, um, he brought me to the word content, which I know for a lot of you right now, that word maybe even just like stirs up like anxiety <laughs> for you content creators out there, uh-huh. whatever that is in any way, shape or form. So I think even, you know, women who stay home and take care of their kids, they feel like they have to be content creators in the age that we're living in. You know, yeah. it's just like, I've got to make yes. my life look like it's like something's happening here. Right. And he brought me to the word content. And I never noticed before that that content looks exactly the same as content. Right. And yeah. I just thought, wow, that means two different things, but you just say it a little differently, but it's spelled the same. And it's like, and and he just spoke to my heart and was like, Christy, the content will always come when you are content in That's me good. alone. If you stay wow. in the center of my heart, like if I'm the prize, if I'm the treasure, like you stay content in my heart. And I, he's like, he's the greatest content creator there is. And that's what I've found. It's like when we come home to his heart and we just surrender, he's like, oh, I got all the content you need. Like I'm going to pour it out through you, but you've got to come home and stay content in my heart. And I was like, okay, (laughs) you know, so it's beautiful beautiful. in a lot of ways to have lived as long as I have, you know, <laughs> I'm older. Okay. Whatever. <laughs> um, this is a monumental birthday year. I'll just say that, but oh, well, yes. it's like, you know, it's just, it's sweet to have seen his faithfulness in that, that he really will do that. So I hope that encourages you and a lot of, you know, women out there who are just, yeah, in that struggle right now. It is so encouraging. You spoke to me. I'm coming out of a season of, um, a lo- I published a book um, three year- three years ago, three months ago. And Wonderful. so I'm coming, I'm still in the season, right? I mean, you know, oh, but yes. also <laughs> at, out of the thick of it, it seems. It's, yes. um, it's, it's become more steady. But even in that feeling, the guilt and the discouragement of, of being a mom and feeling like I'm my, my focus is pulled and the weariness of doing good and feeling like, is this really making a difference? Is it converting? You know, all of these things we worry about. Um, And so even for me today, it ministered. Um, The the contentness, English is so weird, first and foremost, but I love how we have a few (laughs) of those things like content and content um, that are, because I love those metaphors and those connections. Um, I love that. Thank you for sharing that, that Mm -hmm. word that God gave you and sharing it with us. Um, so encouraging. Okay. Last question I want to ask. Um, Glorious and the Mundane, we were talking about that a little bit before we talked about um, this whole discouragement thing and, and continuing to go even when you feel um, discouraged. Um, but your whole idea through your podcast and all the things, um, different branches is um, finding glory in the mundane and the everyday things. And so maybe in your season right now of um, just what day-to-day life looks like for you, how have you found glory and purpose in the little things? Um, Knowing that, I think it'd be encouraging to hear from someone who has had a platform for 30 years and who has sung on incredible stages. How are you finding that in the day-to-day? And then how can we do that too? Yeah. Well, the Lord met me with that phrase back when I was in early motherhood and Mm -hmm. early motherhood, I will say was, and it's not like that for everyone. It was just the, um, the season of my life that God chose to teach me how to abide. (laughs) And it was because I thought I could just strap my kids on and keep going, but that doesn't work when you are in the habit. Like I was then of like, yesing myself into exhaustion. (laughs) Right. So I was doing too much. um, And I will say that my identity back then was very much, I wouldn't have told you that, but I wouldn't have thought that, but it was very much wrapped up in my career and my ministry and what I was doing. But God in his kindness, he met me. Um, I met a lady named Terry in that season. I'll never forget going to coffee with her. And I was just crying and she had nine kids 
Wow. She homeschooled them all. Um, she was a country music writer. Oh and, my goodness. Yeah. And so I was like, um, can we go to coffee? Because <laughs> yeah. I had laid down my career for a little bit when my kids were little, because I knew that I needed to reprioritize my life. Yeah. I knew that like the Lord was calling me to do that for a time and thank the Lord I did. Cause I still am like, I really am seeing the fruit of that mm-hmm. even now in Sweet. my relationship with my kids. So that time is, was crucial for me. And I'll never forget just sitting there through tears, just going like, how do you do it? Like, how do you, like you're asking me, you know, how do you find, um, glory and, you know, the, the being in the hidden, you know, with in this season, especially of, um, kind of behind the scenes and, and I'll never forget. She just was like, all I know to do is that I invite the glorious into the mundane. And I just start crying. And she's like, she's like, I, I write songs on my laundry room floor. Um, I pray for my kids while I'm folding laundry. She's like, I pray the armor of God over my kids mm. as I fold their different articles of clothing. And wow. like, think about the shirt, the socks that oh. all, and I was like going, okay, like, and I remember driving home that day in my minivan. I drove a minivan for like nine years and it was like my sanctuary. And <laughs> I just remember going, okay, God, if that's true, like if I don't have to compartmentalize my world, like if this is all one thing, like there's no more excuses. Like I just, I want to be so aware of your presence. And I really think that that's the true definition of worship is just an awareness of his presence yeah. in everything. When mm-hmm. we are just in the carpool line or we're at our cubicle at work or you're studying for an exam, whatever it is, it's like, I really believe that I've come to find out. And even this is one of the courses of the song is just that this is a big statement I know, but I really do think on a base level, if you look through scripture, even it's like God's presence ultimately is his plan for his people. Yeah. <laughs> like you look yeah. about, you know, the Israelites and even just how Jesus came, he's Emmanuel, God with us. Like, and mm-hmm. then he gave us the Holy spirit. It's like, it's ultimately been his plan that his presence would be what we treasure most. That's good. And I think in that time of my life, when I look back, it's like, I knew all about how to sing for God and live for God, but I didn't know how to sit with him and wow. live, live from him. Yeah. And that's, it's a very different thing to live for God and live from God. And, and so that was the base level he wanted to bring me back to is like, okay, baby girl, like I want you to learn how to be my kid, be my yeah. daughter learn Mm -hmm. how to be found in the hidden place. Um, And that's what I still try to practice. I don't have it figured out. As you know, a year ago, I almost quit everything. So, but that's, he keeps bringing us back right to these places where he's like these kind of Ebenezer moments, these monumental moments in our adult life, even where he's just like, okay, let's come back to that place of, you know, that, that I'm the prize. I'm the treasure. You know, he's going, I'm the outcome. You look to all these other things. It's so you quickly can look to these other things. And I, and then it's like, we can't see the forest for the trees. It's like often the very thing we're trying to do and build for him, it blocks us from actually experiencing him just in the day to day and like in the morning, just sitting with him. And so those are just little things, even like the practice of just, I just sit with him every morning. And sometimes I, sometimes I use words and sometimes I don't. Mm -hmm. And I just make sure that I'm receiving his love on that level every day before I try to give love to anyone else or like do anything else. Just really that consecration I talked about before yeah, and just looking for him in all things all day. You know what I mean? And I thought, I know that sounds like, yeah, that's great. Easier said than done, but, <laughs> but it's in those simple practices. I think yeah. that I just have found such contentment in the everyday things of life because I've learned to be aware that he is literally right there and he's the treasure. Mm-hmm. If that makes so, sense. No, it totally makes sense. And <laughs> here's the, here's the funny thing. I say this all the time that when I have someone on the podcast, none of us are experts and Mm -hmm. facilitating a conversation. I don't want anyone to think that I have this figured out because Christy, if I'm super candid with you, this season of launching a book in the middle of motherhood, I think it would be crazy even if I didn't have a child, but in the middle of everything, um, the Lord smacked me over the head like a month ago or two (laughs) months ago, right after the book launched. And he was like, Tara, 
You are doing things for me instead of just being with me. You are more obsessed with doing than actually just being devoted to me. And that has stuck with me because, man, I have felt like I need to climb this ladder and I haven't I haven't dwelled with the Lord. Like you were talking about how Jesus came down to be with us, Emmanuel, God with us. And how mm-hmm. when God came, He, this idea of dwelling was he pitched his tent with his people, a permanent right. residence. Yes. And I have just not been living that way. And so I just want to say thank you for encouraging even me because every single thing you said was anointed for me. And I know it is for someone listening too. So I Thank it. you. I know that you're so mm-hmm. humble and saying, you know, I don't have this figured out either, but it's really cool that we get to um, just encourage others in our own struggles, but then point to the hope of the gospel. And that is what right. you do so well through your songs, through this album. And I'm so encouraged um, as we close. Um, I, I, I know everyone's pretty savvy, but will you remind people where they can find this album, your podcast and all the things to stay connected with you? Yes. Um, well, you talked about the Lullaby album. If if those of you listening have littles, um, the Lullaby album is called Be Held. And it has it's actually our favorite project we have ever been a part of Aww. in 28 years. And then um, this new album is called This Is The Hour. And it is available anywhere that you listen to music. But we also have CDs for those of you who are like kind of, you know, wanting to do like the vintage, like retro thing. Um, Love it. I know it's like becoming a thing. And my daughter, who's 20, actually designed the CD and you can find that on christyknuckles.com. So we have mm-hmm. CDs available there. Um, if you want, you know, that sort of thing, but yeah, anywhere you listen to music, um, you can find that on all the digital platforms. And then my, my podcast is called the glorious and the mundane. And I did write a book too. It's yes, called the life you right. long for. And it's actually all about that season of God teaching me how to abide, um, how to so live from, from rest. And so, yeah, that's out there too. Yay. Oh, I'm so glad. I will have everything linked below for you guys um, to go check out and listen. I love the CD idea, by the way. Like, yeah, I don't know if been... my car actually has a CD player anymore. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm trying to think now. Most of them don't. Um, <laughs> right? It's not funny. <laughs> but right. I like the idea of, especially with your kids and me, like just the idea of like when I was growing up, like popping a CD in or even a CD player in your room and just like I listening. Know. So that's so, so sweet. Fun. <laughs> Christy, thank you for being here. What a thank fun you. conversation. Yeah. Has blessed me deeply. Friends of this encourage you, please make sure to you know, take a screenshot of this and let Christy and I know um, through tagging us what encouraged you the most. Or if you're walking through um, something that we shared, um, we're in this with you. Um, the gospel hope is for you and is covering you in this season. So we love you guys. Um, thank you so much for being here. And I will talk to you next week. <laughs>